Okay, in this video, I want to show you how to record uh, over a backing track, and I'm going to be using Studio One 3, the free version. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is double click on the uh, application here, Studio One 3. In uh, Studio One 3, there's a free version called Prime, and if you do buy an a uh, Personas uh, Audio Box i2 or i1, uh, you'll get a free version of Studio One that has a little bit more features. Um, I want to make sure I have the sample rate in the the, uh, the bit rate here set. Depends on what you're doing really, but for just audio, you know, 44.1, and depending on your computer, how powerful it is. I'm just going to set the buffer rate at 256. Uh, this is, if you go too low and your computer can't handle it, you'll get a lot of pops and clicks. I think 256 is fine uh, for recording. You just want to be able to hear yourself. This is kind of what latency is, um, how long it takes you know, the signal to reach your ears, there's going to be a slight delay. And it's not really that noticeable if you set it at 256 or anywhere below. I think 512 and above, you'll start to hear a little bit of a, a latency before what you play and what, what you hear. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on. Let's create a new song. I'm just going to call it um, Backing. You can set all this how you like it. Uh, one of the main things you want to de-click is uh, stretch audio files to song tempo. Make sure that is unchecked because if it's not, it's whatever tempo you have and you don't know the tempo of the backing track you import, it's going to stretch it and it's going to probably sound funky. So de-check this, stretch audio files to song tempo, extremely important. Uh, click OK. That gives us a blank slate here to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I need to get a backing track in here. So um, I do have a backing track saved on my desktop. And keep in mind this is a free version, so you can't import or export any MP3 files. So um, if you all you have is an MP3 file, um, you'll need to convert it to WAV. If you just Google, you know, MP3 to WAV converter, there's numerous ones online that you can find. Uh, if you did uh, purchase an audio box i2 or i1, uh, you can get an add-on that lets you import and export MP3s for $9.99. So with that said, I need to go to Song, Import File. And I have a backing track saved on my desktop. This is a WAV file. It says WAV right here. I'm going to click open and open that file. Okay, so let's just go ahead and play that. Okay, sounds great. So the next thing I need to do is uh, find a track to record on and place over this track. So I'm going to click uh, track. In the first one, I'm going to add audio track mono. Now I've got my guitar plugged directly into the audio box. I'm not using an amp or anything, but you could use an amp if you want to uh, mic up your amp and connect an XLR cable to the input and record the microphone. Uh, this little demo, I'm just going to show you how to do it without any extra stuff. Uh, just recording using Ampire, the free plugin that comes with uh, Studio One Free. It's an amp sim. So I'm plugged directly in. Now, the next thing I need to do is click Mix. So I've got my two tracks set up here. A good thing to do is go ahead and rename this track as Guitar. So that's going to be my uh, lead guitar track. I also like to choose a little bit brighter colors here. I'm going to choose uh, yellow. So the next thing we're going to have to do is click this little uh, arrow here pointing right. That's going to allow us to put effects on the track. We go up to inserts, click the little uh, plus icon, and now it's going to bring up Empire. So to hear what you are playing, you're going to need to click this little icon, the monitor. So now I can hear my guitar. So it sounds pretty good. You can control the drive, the bass, the mid-range. 
Um, there's a few different controls on here. I'm just gonna, you know, leave it like it is right here. And I'm gonna play over this track. The next thing I need to do is click this little circle and it becomes red and that means I'm ready for recording. So I'm gonna place the cursor here by clicking on this area right here. And let's see. That's an okay sound. Um, that's usable for me. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is click this big circle down here right next to the play button. This is the stop button. I'm just gonna click this and it's gonna start recording my track. And keep in mind, I do have headphones in uh, connected to the audio box. You could also use the speakers if you have that set up as well. So click record and then I'm just gonna record a little bit. Okay, I click the stop bar and that stops it. Um, let's go back and see what I recorded here. Okay, so I got this part. I'm gonna turn off the monitor and the record button. Sounds pretty good, I think. Okay, so I want to add a few effects on there just to make it enhance it a little bit so it sounds better over the track. I always like to pan a little bit, so I'm going to pan maybe uh, 13 over. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I want to add an EQ to this. So let's add channel strip. That gives me a, a few different options, and the um, effects aren't coming up real fast because I have another program uh, recording at the same time here. When you do the screen capture, things uh, kind of get uh, slow things down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, this program works really great. First thing I want to do is click LC, that's low cut filter. I want to put it on about, um, let's just say 9800 somewhere around there it's fine just to make the lows take the lows out of the guitar not really needed in a track like this now the next thing i want to do at 2.5 where it's already set i just want to boost maybe about 4 db depends on what you want and now let's listen back <laughs> That sounds pretty good. So the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of reverb. It sounds really, really dry. So I'm going to go to Sins, click the plus icon, add effects channel. And then I'm going to, again, click on this right arrow. Go to inserts, and then I'm going to add this uh, mix verb. They have a uh, pre little uh, template set up. Um, just click electric guitar gated. I like to turn the gate off though. I'm not really a fan of gates on the guitar a whole lot. So that's a lot, a lot of verb there. Depending on what you like, um, you can just kind of change it, the size of the verb. I'm going to leave it just like that, but I'm going to take the amount of verb on the guitar track off. That's why we want to use a send effect. You can do that. A little bit more natural. Take the pre down a little bit. Let me do a tad more on there. 
I'm using headphones, so I don't have any sophisticated monitoring system going on. I think that sounds pretty good. I'm going to go to Sins. I'm going to add one more effect channel. And this time I'm going to put a beat delay on it. So there we go. Um, I want to change the beats to 130 second. It's just, just something I like doing. Now we have this. Kind of a room sound that we just kind of manipulated. But that's a little too much. Let's bring it down here. So we got this. That's a little more natural. I'm going to take just a tad more bass out. Maybe to 115. Let's see what I have. It's a little loud, so let me turn the uh, guitar track down just a tad. That's pretty good. So, that's what we got so far. Now, if we uh, play this with the effects. Now, let's take the effects off and listen to the same thing without the sins and the uh, EQ. Sounds good, but it sounds really dry. I think it fits in the mix better if you add a little reverb, delay, and EQ. So those are a few things that you can do to make your track stand out a little better. It's all personal choice. If you want to add more verb, more delay, change the EQ, uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do. This is just a quick tutorial to get you going. So um, pretty much I imported a backing track with this free program, recorded over it, and I, now I can hear what I sound like and get a good idea of what I need to work on to get better. This is just a great tool and it's completely free, this program. And if you do, you know, have one about the interface, uh, you can pick that up and without miking anything, I think this is a pretty usable sound. Now you can go to the master fader here. On the right side, click the right arrow and put effects on it as well. If your track is not that loud, uh, we can put a channel strip on it. And uh, we're going to use the compress button here just to make the track a little louder. You can see how, track, how loud the track is on this meter on the right over here. So it's close to zero, so it's pretty loud already. Zero is kind of the highest point that we ever want to go to. a little compression on it and click the gain it'll raise the volume of the track it's clipping so we don't want it to clip when it starts getting red up here you get into the clip level so you never want it to clip turn it down a little bit I think that sounds pretty good right there. And you can also EQ the whole track if you like. There's multiple things. This is just a simple uh, little tutorial about how to get the audio into your computer over a backing track. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Thanks.